quadratic word problems. So we're going to do some number problems in open topped box question. So three times the square of an integer is 432. So these are word problems. Word problems you have to have a let statement. So let's let x represent the integer. So it says three times the square of an integer. So if x is the integer and I square it, so that means x squared, and three times it just means three x squared. This was pretty easy. Is, when you see is, that's your equal sign, is 432. So there's not much here. This is a very simple question to solve for. Divide by three and you get 144 and you get x is equal to, don't forget, plus or minus 12. Remember that minus 12 squared is also 144 as is 12 squared. Okay, so therefore the integer is, integer is plus or minus 12. Okay, number two, the product of two consecutive even numbers. Consecutive even numbers is 288. What are the two numbers? So is 288, that's my equal sign, but the product of two consecutive. So if I'm talking about consecutive even numbers, and let's say, let x represent, x represent the first number, then what would be the next one? What would be consecutive means the one right after it or right before it, right before or after consecutive. So if I say x is the first number, then they're even numbers. So that means the second number is going to be, we're going to add two to it. Number is x plus two, right? So if the first number was four, the next number is six. Six, eight, two consecutive. Now it says the product of these numbers. So if I'm talking product, I'm talking about multiplication. So x times x plus two. So there's my product of two even numbers. So let x represent the first number and it's going to be an even number. So maybe we should say the first even number just to be more clear. And that has to be equal to 288. Okay, so I don't know. Let's expand it and simplify and see if we can factor it. So x squared plus 2x minus 288 is equal to zero. Now because they're consecutive even numbers, um, even numbers like two, four, six, eight. We're not talking about integers, uh, not integers, but decimal numbers. So this should be factorable, right? So I'm looking for a product of minus 288 and a sum of positive two. And it just so happens that 18 and 16 give me, um, well, which one is negative here? If one is positive, so minus 16 will be negative and so if I factor this, I would get x plus 18 and x minus 16 equals zero. So remember, we're solving an equation here. So we set it to zero and solve. So x equals 16 or negative 18. Okay, so they want the two numbers. So these aren't the two numbers because the numbers would have to be consecutive. These would not be consecutive. But I can say, therefore, the two numbers are, now we have a choice. So we have 16 and 18, or minus 18 and minus 16. So you can see how the product of these two numbers would also be 288, as will these two. Okay, so we have, we have two possible solutions. Okay, number three, it says the sum of two numbers is 26, the sum of their squares is a minimum. So this is sort of like those perimeter and area questions. We're going to have two equations. See these is, 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 is? That means equals, right? The sum of two numbers. Okay, so let's let x and y be the two numbers. 
and now I'm going to make up my two equations and figure out how I'm going to solve it. So the sum of two numbers is 26. Now remember when you're doing word problems on a test, don't just say, I don't know how to do it. I, I, I don't know. Start writing things down. Make up your little equations. And even if you just have part of it down, like if you can say x plus y is 26, that, that's good for one mark or some understanding marks that you know what to do. And the sum of their squares. So the sum of their squares is a minimum. Well, is a minimum. Well, so we'll just let it equal to sum for now. And their squares is going to be x squared plus y squared. Okay, so now you're looking at this and saying, yeah, what do we do? We've got two different variables. So just like as if this was perimeter and we we're trying to find area, for instance, we would write one of these in terms of the other, right? So x plus y equals 26. So I'm going to write it over here. x is equal to 26 minus y. So I'm going to plug that in here so I only have one, uh, not here, sorry, let's just write it right here. x equals 26 minus y and I'm going to, this is what I'm trying to solve for, right? The sum of their squares is a minimum. So this means I'm trying to find the vertex. So I'm going to plug 26 minus y in for x squared here. So I'm going to write 26 minus y squared plus y squared and I'm going to expand and simplify this and um, I'm going to find where the vertex is, what value for y would give me the, um, the lowest point. Now you can see when I expand this, let's write this out. So 26 is squared is 276, twice the product, that's minus 52y plus y squared plus y squared. So let's write it in descending order. So I have two y squared, um, minus 52y plus 676. So that's the sum. Now, if I want to know where the vertex is, I can use that nice little equation. So find the axis of symmetry or the y coordinate. So to find y on the axis of symmetry is going to be symmetry is going to be um, y equals minus b over 2a. In other words, I'm just using this quadratic equation, minus b, so that's 52 over 2a over 4, right? 2 times 2. And that's going to give me 13. So that's my solution. x is 13. If x is 13 and they add to 26, then y is also 13. So therefore, the two numbers are 13 are 13 and 13. So 13 plus 13 is 26, and 13 squared plus 13 squared, that's going to give you the minimum value. Okay, let's move on to, what's the next one? The magic open top box. And um, I don't know if you've seen open top boxes before, and I meant to do you a little visual. So let's just take, uh, Let's just take this lesson that we had here. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a square out of each corner. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so it's not outside your, your view here. So if we have a piece of paper like this, so let's say this is my, let's turn it this way. This is my 50 by 40, 50 centimeters by 40 centimeter piece of tin. So it's an open topped box is made by a, um, a rectangular piece of tin and cutting squares out of it. So what you're doing is you're going to cut a square out of each corner. So you get out your scissors. I don't have any scissors with me, so we're going to do it very roughly by just ripping the corners. And you can see that, let's try to make it the same, if I take a square out of each corner and then I fold it up like this, I have a wonderful open top box. So you can try this at home. It's like a little craft. 
And we'll take this corner out of here and one out of here. These are all supposed to be the very same, right? We're getting really fancy here. Okay, so there's my open top box. You're going to see these questions a lot. They show up every year with some little different uh, little variation on a theme. So I took out a corner, and each corner that I took out was X by X. So let's draw it so if it was flat. So I would have had this. It's 50 by 40. 40, 50, and I took out a square here, 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 and here. Okay, so it says you cut the squares of equal sides from each corner. The base area is to be 875 centimeters squared. The base area. Okay, so that's this part here, right? Or with my box, this is now my base. So how long is this base? Well, we took out an X from here and an X from here. So this is going to be 50 minus 2X now on the base, right? That's from here to here. And similarly, on the other side length, we had 40 centimeters here. This is going to be 40 minus 2X on this base. And 50 minus 2X times 40 minus 2X is going to be this 875. So that's all we have to do. So let's say let x represent, and we're trying to find the side length of the square. So we're trying to find x here, x by x, because it's a square. Okay, so um, we have let x represent the length of the square. The square cutout, if you want. Cutout. Okay, so we have um, 50 minus 2x, so I said I took off 2 here, so I'm going from here to here, and I have 40 minus 2x for the other width. So I have 50 minus 2x times 40 minus 2x has to be equal to 875. So again, now we have a quadratic equation that we're trying to solve for x for. So I'm going to expand, so 50 times 40 is 2,000, and um, then I have minus 100 and minus 80, so minus 180x plus 4x squared, and I'm going to subtract 875, so I can set the equation equal to 0. So now I'm going to write it in descending order, 4x squared minus 180x plus that would be 1125 equals 0. Okay, I don't have any common factors here. This is an even number. This has to be divisible by 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, quadratic formula to solve because it's going to be too hard for me to factor, factor this. Okay, so you know your quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing over 2a. You probably heard me say that so many times now that you know it off by heart, hopefully. Okay, so minus minus b minus minus 180, that's going to be 180, and the square root of 180 squared minus 4 times 4 times 1125. And the whole thing is going to be over 2 times 4. Okay, let's bring that up over here. It didn't leave a lot of room. So if you do the math right, I'm not going to do calculations for you. You've got a calculator. You should end up with this. 180 plus 120 over 8. And if you add those together, you would get x equals 300 over 8. If you subtract, you'd get x equals 60 over 8 which you would reduce. Now, the problem was 300 over 8. 300 over 8, how big is that? Well, 60 over 8 is, that goes in 7, 7 and a half times. 300 divided by 8, 302, 30 is, uh, it's going to go 3 times, is 24, and 60 
at 737.5 or something like that. I might have made a mistake. I'm not really worried about it because I know right away that this is too large. I cannot cut a square out of here that's 37 and a half centimeters and as well from here because that would be 75 centimeters, right? That's way too big. So this is the only one that works, seven and a half. So therefore the square length is 7.5 centimeters. Um, the second question, don't forget when you're doing word problems, make sure you answer everything you're asked. What is the volume of the box? Well, I knew that the area of the base is 875 so volume is going to be 875 times 7.5 and I didn't do that calculation so let's bring in my lovely pink calculator 875 times 7.5 I get 6,562.5 centimeters cubed don't forget when you have volume it's cubed I'm just going to check that 300 divided by 8. Yeah, it was 37.5. Okay, great. One more question for you. It says the hypotenuse of a right triangle measures 10 centimeters. One of the other two sides is 2 meters longer than the third side. Find the unknown side length. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a right angle triangle. And we have hypotenuse here. So this is 10 meters, that's a big triangle. And one of the other two sides is two meters longer than the third. So let's let one side be x, then the other side is going to be x plus two, right? Okay, so let's let x represent one side, one length of one side, or the length of one side would have been a little better grammar. And so x plus 2 is the other, x plus 2, the third side. Okay, so to set up an equation for this, you have to think about what do you know about right angle triangles, and it should come back to you very quickly. It's the Pythagorean relationship, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the length of that, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that means that x plus 2 squared, this side plus this side squared, is going to be the hypotenuse squared. So that's pretty easy. All you have to do is expand square, x squared twice the product, squared, plus x squared minus 100 equals 0. And what do I have left here? Now I have 2x squared plus 4x minus 100 equals 0. I'm going to divide by 2. And do you know what multiplies to minus 50 and adds to 2? Ooh, 50. I don't think so. Okay, let's use quadratic formula. So negative b, that's my b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 1. So that gives me minus 2 plus or minus the square root of, we can do this in our heads, I'm sure that's 4, and that is 200. Uh, yeah. So 200, it's all positive, so 204 over 2. Make sure you don't divide this into this, please, please, please. Okay, so I have minus 2, and I'm going to add the square root of 204. Let's see what we get when we do that. Now, see, I didn't want to divide by the 2 because then it would divide just this by 2, right? So we get the numerator, so I get 12.28 divided by 2. That's one solution because I added it. And the second one, don't forget your minus sign is here, right? Don't use the minus here. The negative number, minus 2, this is the minus. Second square root of 204. 
and divide that by 2, and I get minus 8 x equals minus 8.14, and this is, um, did we, we didn't divide that by 2, did we? Nope, 6.14. Okay, so I get 6.14 and negative, while this one is inadmissible. I don't know what your teacher wants you to write, but I always say it's inadmissible. It's, to, it's negative. We don't have negative lengths. So that means this side is going to be 6.14, and that's going to be 8.14. Therefore, sides are 6.14 and 8.14. So if you, let's just see how close we are. So 6.14 squared plus 8.14 squared equals 103.9 so it's pretty close to 100 don't forget that we did a lot of rounding here as well when we took the square root okay so that's how you do some number problems um, if you have any others that you're having trouble with feel free to leave a comment below uh, I've hoped you you have subscribed to the channel to support the work that I do for you and we'll be moving on to trigonometry next